On this channel over the years, we've unboxed a ton of less expensive used MacBooks. Typically, I like to say that if you're shopping for a used MacBook, the five to $600 price point can be extremely fruitful. And it seems like uh, Microsoft has really taken that to heart because this is the new Microsoft Surface Laptop Go. And this thing starts at just $550. So this brand new computer that's still sealed in its box costs about as much as a used MacBook from 2015. So I have to take a look at it. Now in terms of specs, it's obviously not a monster for this kind of money. We're talking about a 10th gen Core i5 processor, 64 gigabytes of storage, and four gigabytes of RAM. So, mm, that's definitely gonna let it down a little bit, but let's see, for 550 bucks, we're talking like Chromebook money, how good or bad can this thing be? All right, let's open this thing up. This box is tiny, and I'm pretty sure that this is a 12 inch laptop, an absolutely tiny little device. Oh, look at this box. All right, you ready? We're going in. Oh, it's so little. So we've got two little booklets here. This is probably gonna be documentation, and then I'm assuming this is a yeah, so it has the uh, the proprietary Surface Connect charger, but if we actually look around the computer, I do see a USB-C port, so hopefully that will support charging. I would imagine it would. So we'll set this off to the side and examine the body of the laptop itself. Now, it's a very small device, but it's not particularly thin. So here, for example, is a 13-inch MacBook Pro. Now, footprint-wise, we are noticeably narrower. That's because Microsoft likes to use three by two aspect ratio displays. Um, but the Surface Laptop is, it looks like just a hair thicker. So on a smaller footprint, it definitely does come off as a little bit chunky. Aw, I kind of like this, this sort of two-tone situation that we've got here. On camera, it doesn't look quite as, as good as it does in person. Let's see if we can get a good angle on that there. But we've got a gray trackpad and gray keys on a silver chassis. Hi there, I'm Cortana and I'm here to help. I'm sure you are, but I would like you to be quiet, please. Thank you. One thing I am noticing is the bottom plate is not metal. I thought it was, but now that I've taken it off, this is like a soft touch plastic. Now, one of the big advantages to buying a used MacBook is the build quality. That's kind of what Apple is known for. And even if you're buying a five-year-old, even a six-year-old MacBook for $550, you're still gonna get something with very decent build quality. Sure, it might be, uh, it might have some signs of use, but at the very least, you know that you're getting a high quality and well-built laptop. So how does the Surface Book Go compare? Honestly, it's really, really good. This thing feels premium and solid. There's very little wobble to the display. Everything here feels really, really well put together. And, uh, you know, I think that's really possible just because the, the sacrifices you're making are not in the build, they're on what's on the inside. Four gigs of RAM, 64 gigabytes of storage. You know, we're talking Chromebook level specs here. Let's do a quick keyboard test, shall we? Oh. That's a really good keyboard. So here's the big question that I have with this laptop. It costs less than half as much as this MacBook Pro, $1,300 versus 550 bucks. This is almost half the price of a MacBook Air. 
and it's certainly comparable in terms of price with five-year-old MacBook Pros that aren't gonna be anywhere near as powerful or as updated as this 13-inch. But the question is, is it actually a good overall package? Is it more compelling than buying a used Mac or a used premium Windows device? And so that's what we're gonna try to find out. I've been using the Surface Laptop Go for a few days now and this has been a really tough call. Let me just start by saying, before we get into anything, that I really wanted to like this laptop. If Microsoft could pull off an affordable but premium feeling device with great battery life at 550 bucks, that would be absolutely killer. But unfortunately, that's not what they've done here. Let's start with what they got right. The build quality is simply outstanding. At 550 bucks, most new laptops are celebrations of petroleum, plastic from head to toe, creaky keyboards, and sharp, poorly molded corners. This is not that. Even though the bottom plate is plastic, it's a very solid piece that doesn't flex or creak. The keyboard deck feels like it's reinforced with steel rebar. It doesn't budge an inch. The display as well is extremely robust despite being quite thin, and in total, this laptop is really well designed. The trackpad is silky smooth, and yeah, I'm gonna say it, it is just as good as a MacBook trackpad. At least, well, it's new. It is made of plastic compared to glass, so I can't really speak to the long-term durability a few years down the road. To see such a well-built device with premium materials and a very decent Core i5-1035G1 quad-core chip, the same one that you'll get in the more expensive configurations, at this price point is truly remarkable. But unfortunately, apart from the materials and the CPU, it's kind of too good to be true. Take this screen for example. From afar, it looks like a very bright panel with thin bezels, laminated glass, and even gently curved corners. Very modern, very premium. It's even a touch screen, but take a look a little closer and it starts to fall apart a little bit. For one, the off-axis viewing angles are not great. For two, it's not a very crisp display. At 1536 by 1024, it's not even close to 1080p. And sure, it's a 12-inch display, so it's not like it's 2006 over here. We're talking 148 pixels per inch, but it does feel decidedly last-gen. For context, it's only marginally more pixel-dense than the old-generation silver bezel MacBook Air. Also a bit weird is the keyboard. It is absolutely phenomenal to type on, don't get me wrong, but it's not backlit. That just seems like such a default thing for laptops to have these days, it's a little weird not to see it. The lack of lighting is compounded by the fact that it's white text on gray keys, so when it's dark, it can be a little tricky to read what's printed on them. This base model lacks the fingerprint reader integrated into the power button you'll get on the higher end configurations, but the keyboard itself is the same. And besides the lack of backlight, that is a good thing, because the key feel is superb. But now we have to get to the elephant in the room. 64 gigabytes and four gigabytes. Those are not numbers you wanna see in 2020. When I'm reviewing an eight-year-old MacBook that costs 300 bucks, I point out that four gigabytes of RAM is gonna hold you back. But at 550 for a brand new device, it's a red flag large enough to cover most of Manhattan. It's also worth noting that that SSD is eMMC storage. You know, the crappy type of SSD that you'll find in those cheap Alibaba laptops for like a hundred bucks? Yeah, not good. Also, this is Windows here, folks. You're not getting the full 64 gigabytes on a good day. Formatting alone is gonna bring that down to 57, and Windows brings that down to just 34 gigabytes that you have at your disposal. But you say, oh, that doesn't matter, it's a cloud device, it's more akin to an iPad or a Chromebook than a MacBook, so it doesn't matter that you don't have storage, it's about web browsing. Well, guess what, folks? It sucks at web browsing. I defeated this machine with just four Chrome tabs a few times. It was pinned at 100% CPU, 
and memory usage. If you do manage to get a bunch of tabs open without the machine slowing to a crawl, be prepared for almost every tab to reload when you switch off of it. It's absolutely an abysmal experience, so much so that I'd sooner take a Chromebook. Remember, my main criticism of Chromebooks is that you're missing out on a full OS experience, but I would rather have that than take Windows being absolutely kneecapped by 30 gigabytes of eMMC storage and four gigabytes of RAM. The reality of this specific laptop is that it's essentially a marketing tactic. It exists purely so Microsoft can advertise starting at $549. I mean, you can't even get the cool ice blue or sandstone in this configuration. It's designed to draw you in with that low price point, then wow you with the cool colors and much improved eight gigabytes of RAM and 128 or 256 gigabyte legit SSDs, and you go, all right, it's worth $700 or $900 to just get that better experience, it'll last me longer, I'm just gonna go for that. And the weird thing is, at seven or 900 bucks, it's still undercutting all MacBooks that you could possibly buy, so I say, cut the fat, get rid of this $550 model, and just sell the other two. But the real question at the beginning of this video was, is it worth buying a new laptop for used laptop money? And the answer is a resounding no. Personally, I'd rather take an early 2015 13-inch MacBook Pro any day of the week, even though it's got a dual-core processor, even though it's a five-year-old laptop with a much more dated design. Despite those factors, it's just more useful than the Surface Laptop Go. It's as simple as that. Optimization is key, and this is just not an optimized configuration. It's, it's really a shame. So that is the $550 Microsoft Surface Laptop Go. Honestly, I was a little bit disappointed, but let me know your take on this in the comments below. Which would you go for? A cheap Surface Laptop Go or a used MacBook? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to follow me on Twitter, at Luke Miani. Check out my Twitch channel and my subreddit, which you'll find linked in the description below. And with that, I'll see you all in the next video.